Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight, uh, this broadcast, not actually quite time, we're about an hour away from our live broadcast on live stream, different news segment altogether. This is a prophetic segment of our news broadcast. Uh, separate from live stream there, we will bring live stream here as well on uh, YouTube channel Israeli News Live. But this segment here is going to just astound your mind, no doubt. The Holy Spirit is so kind to come and reveal to me the prophetic side of events that are happening in and around Israel right now to show you that you are clearly sitting on the edge of your seat of the redemption of Israel. Now, I might mind you, it is a remnant of Israel that will be redeemed. It is not all that claim to be Jews that will be redeemed. It will be a, a remnant there. But this is very exciting, to say the least here. So I want to kind of look at some of the uh, headlines here to kind of give you a little background of why I'm saying this here. This here is on um, the Telegraph, an article here. Germany expects up to 1.5 million migrants in 2015. This is all from the Syrian refugee crisis that is going on uh, as a result of the wars that are, that are happening in the Middle East there. Uh, we know that Syria has the problem. Uh, the, the wars have spilled, of course, uh, in Iraq as well. Uh, many refugees have fled this country here, but the Syrian refugees are, are definitely flooding into Europe. Uh, one of the major concerns there. And in some estimates, we've already seen in broadcast here in Eastern Europe that Germany expects to have 20 million refugees from Syria uh, within the coming years here. So it is a major crisis that is going on there. Uh, and this, there is a reason for me telling you this. So keep these thoughts in your mind. Don't let that go. Uh, as we look at this here, it says Germany is facing an influx of 1.5 million refugees this year. Almost twice the official estimate leaked government figures say in the EU struggles to find a solution to, to the migrant crisis. Um, that's just one right there. Here is another one. This was uh, from the New York Times. Violence in Syria spurs a huge surge in civilian flight. Um, the, the photo here, Beirut, Lebanon, a tenuous truce in Syria's countryside north of the city of Homs was shattered this month when Russia warplanes attacked the village of Tir Malak, killing at least a dozen people and sending most of the residents into a hurried exile. The assault on the village was part of the wider escalation of violence across the country that has displaced tens of thousands of people in just weeks and led relief workers to warn that Syria is facing one of the, its most serious humanitarian crises of the Civil War as of yet. Now, we got to keep in mind, of course, uh, the, the U.S. media would love to be able to blame uh, Russia, uh, but I personally do not think that Russia is where the problem is here. The United States is clearly clearly the one that, that created the crisis in the first place. And it was through the wars that the United States has done trying to topple Basar Assad that has created the, the hugest uh, humanitarian crisis in this region in the first place. So, uh, and, I, and there's another article too uh, that's on our Israeli News Live uh, Facebook page there. You can go see that uh, Brother Conrad had actually shared with me that, uh, that Russia and China are actually against the New World Order. That's actually something very interesting there. Let me just quickly bring that up to your attention as well. Um, because it is something worth noting, and I would really love for you to guys to be able to see this our article as well before we get right into the prophetic uh, things that are, that are happening here. Uh, it's right here. It's actually the latest one we post there. Uh, and this is here is on RT News, and it says, Russia and China are challenging the world order. U.S. Defense Secretary is claiming this. That's him right there on your screen there in the background there. Uh, but he says here, although the U.S. Uh, US military do not seek, oh, excuse me, he doesn't say this here. Uh, he said, let me tell you what the defense secretary actually stated. He said, terror elements like ISIL, of course, stand entirely opposed to our values, but other challenges. Let me, let me see if we can't get this big enough for you guys to actually see on, on your page as well. Let me just, um, pardon me just a moment here. Um, Okay, terror, terror elements like ISIL, of course, stand entirely opposed to our values, but other challenges are more complicated and given their size and capabilities and potential, potentially more damaging, he said. Some actors appear intent on eroding these principles and under 
cutting the international order that helps enforce them. Of course, neither Russia nor China can overturn that order, but both president, uh, present different challenges for it, Carter said. According to AP, Russia and China are challenging America's preeminence and Washington's so-called stewardship of the world order as they re reassert themselves on the international arena as a serious military powers. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting there just to kind of throw out there because it kind of lets you know that maybe Russia's not the big bad boogeyman as we think because like I said, it was the United States that created the ISIS problem in the Middle East there to begin with. They, they started it. They used it for their advantage, et cetera, and, and so on, so forth and so on. Now, let's go right into the prophetic segment of the broadcast. This news here was just to kind of set a stage for you guys and to share with you what's going on. Now, we're going to look at a little bit of Micah chapter 6, and the reason for that is because I want you guys to be able to see in Micah 6 here, what Israel's sin is, because there is a sin there. We're just going to read it. Uh, I won't go much into it other than uh, the, the reading of it there. Uh, you guys will be able to see clearly what God is dealing with here, what, 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 the, prophet, uh, uh, what the prophet there is saying, and, uh, and then from there, we'll go into their redemption. Uh, and, and, I, and I wanted to bring this out here because they just tie in together and it kind of helps you to know that as well. Um, anyway, so let's, let's move right on into here. This is, uh, are we in chapter 6 here? Let's get it right there. Chapter 6 of Micah. It uh, says, Hear now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. This is God's command to Micah the prophet. Hear, O ye mountains, the Lord's controversy. And ye enduring rocks, the foundation of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Interesting how God has the prophet declare this to the rocks and the mountains as a witness. Remember what happened when Jesus, Yeshua, was here on the earth. He said if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry out. Why? Because the prophet has already prophesied and told the rocks these things, so the rocks are ready to testify on Yeshua's behalf. Uh, it says, O oh my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. Isn't that interesting? Where have I wearied you? See, God never gave Israel a whole set of rules and regulations, but the Pharisees were gladly giving them all that they possibly could. No wonder why Yeshua said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Not just the Pharisees, but the scribes, those that copied the Torah down and the different prophetic books and continually rewrote them. But he says, For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of bondage, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, so much for those that believe that women are not called to the ministry because God clearly identifies Miriam through the prophet Micah as well. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab devised and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shedem unto Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? It hath been told thee, O man, what is good, and what the Lord doth require of thee, only to do justly and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Hark, the Lord crieth unto the city, and it is wisdom to have regarded for thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and the scant measure that is abominable? Shall I be pure with wicked balances and with a bag of deceitful weights. For the rich men thereof are all full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. We can kind of stop right there. That just kind of sets the stage there for sin of what was going on in Israel at the time that God brought against them. In fact, uh, today we did a, the interview with uh, Brother Lionel there, a very interesting interview. We'll be bringing that to you later this week here. I'm sure you will enjoy that. One of the things that I thought that was very nice that he actually stated uh, during that interview when I'm looking at this right here was that when Yeshua came on the earth, 
the most profound thing that he did was to declare his authority when he came. This is something he stated to me I thought was interesting. And when he said, how did he declare his authority? He said, when he told the Pharisees, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up again. He said that was declaring his authority, that he was indeed the Son of God. Because the temple, his body, he was able to raise up in three days just as he said he would. Anyway, let's move on here. Chapter 7, Micah. Woe is me, for I am as the last of the summer fruits, as the great gleaning of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat, nor first ripe fig, which my soul desireth. The godly man is perished out of the earth, and the upright among men is no more. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. Do you realize who the upright See, it says, the godly man is perished. See, avad hasid min ha'aretz. He is perished out of the earth. That godly man, that man called Yeshua, he was killed. And the upright among men is no more. Israel goes into exile as a result of the godly man that was killed. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his, his brother with a net. Their hands are upon that which is evil to do it diligently. The prince asketh and the judge is ready for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth the evil desire of his soul. Thus they weave it together. All kinds of mischief going on in the world. It's very obvious. We know this. Now, bear with me. It's fixing to get really good. You're fixing to see. This is one reason why I have this map here for you, getting ready. I found a nice three-dimensional map of Israel because you're going to find out prophetically what is going on around Israel right now. You are going to see the prophecy unfold before your eyes that Israel is about to be redeemed at this time, this moment in history. All right, so let's go back. Let's look at Micah. Let's continue on. So like I said, just bear with me. We're getting to it. The best of them is as a briar, the most upright is worse than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman, even thy visitation is come. Now shall be their perplexity. Wow. This is just incredible. You know, it's just incredible. All right. Trust ye not in friend. Put ye not confidence in a familiar friend. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are men of his own house. But as for me, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Though I am fallen, I shall arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord is light unto me. Now, the prophet Micah is declaring as if he were Israel, what has happened to Israel. See, though I sit in darkness, the Lord is a light unto me. So even though Israel's eyes are blind right now to who the Mashiach is, who the Messiah is, God is still a light unto them, that remnant of Israel that is there, okay? I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against Him. But they're in darkness. They don't know the sin that they have done against God by killing their Messiah. They don't recognize it as of yet. But He says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against Him until He plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. My, do you see that? Oh, that, that's, that's just incredibly, incredibly good. See? My right is la or. Ira e beso de chute tu. See? His righteousness. That's Mashiach. That's the Messiah. See? He will bring me forth to the light. I shall behold his righteousness. Yeshua is that light. All right? Now, then mine enemies shall see it, and shame shall cover her, who said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall gaze upon her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. 
You see, remember in Micah 4, Israel's driven out of Mount Zion. She's driven out of the city of Jerusalem, parts of it anyway, and is made to dwell in the fields. Remember? I, we're, in, we're in verse 10 right here. Let's quickly just go back. Because Micah's prophecies here are all about what happens to Israel. When we go down to verse 6, And that day saith the Lord, Will I assemble her that it halteth, and I will gather her that is driven away, and her that I have afflicted. Right? That's Israel coming back to her homeland. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a mighty nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from thenceforth even forevermore. And thou, Migdal, elder, the hill of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, yea, the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? See, Benjamin Netanyahu, as anointed king of Israel, cannot deliver the Jews from the hand of her enemies. And so God asked him, why are you crying out aloud? He said, is thy counselor perished? Yes. Well, we already see. Micah in chapter 7 clearly says that our counselor was killed. Uh, he, we killed our own Messiah, and we're waiting for God to bring us to the light. See, the light, he has to bring us to the light. All right? Pains have taken hold of thee as a woman in travail. That's because our borders are surrounded with our enemies to try to annihilate us. Even with the intifada right now, we are in a tremendous labor pains in Israel, and it's only going to get worse. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and shalt dwell in the field, and shalt come even unto Babylon. There shalt thou be rescued. There shall the Lord redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. That's the Catholic Church. Because why? You know, they believed that Yeshua was going to deliver them from the hand of the Romans back 2,000 years ago. But because the prophecy was not fulfilled as of yet, according to Isaiah 61, which it will be fulfilled in this day, we still have to be delivered from the hand of the Babylonians, the Roman Empire, the modern-day Roman Empire. Okay? And now many nations are assembled against thee, God says, that say, let her be defiled and let our eye gaze upon Zion. They all want to take Jerusalem. This is what they all say. Iran says, uh, and their clerics everywhere, they're saying that they must go fight with the Palestinians in order to take Mount Zion, to take Jerusalem back from the Jews. It's everywhere. Let her be defiled and let our eye gaze upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord. Neither understand they his counsel, for he hath gathered them as the sheaves of the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many peoples, and thou shalt devote their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. So see, God is going to deliver Israel without a doubt. Now let's go back to verse 10 in chapter 7 and pick up where we left off. So he says, Then my enemy... My enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover who said unto her, to me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall gaze upon her. Now shall she be trodden down as a mire of the streets. Now I said to you, you're going to see something prophetically here that you've probably never seen before that sets the stage. So bear with me here. Here we go. The day for building thy walls, even that day shall be far removed. Israel doesn't have to build the walls anymore. There won't have to be any more dividing walls that they're trying to do now. So see, God is setting that stage. She's building her walls, and that will be far removed. You won't have to do it anymore, Israel. There shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Let's, let's look at that again. There shall be a day when they, okay, yom hu ve ve adicha yavo. All right, there shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even to the river, and from the sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. All right, look at the map. From the sea, back over in here, you see the Mediterranean, Tel Aviv, Netanya, Hadera, Haifa. The enemies will come to us from those directions, from the mountains of Jordan that you see at the top of your screen. 
from the north, from Hezbollah, from Lebanon, from the, the north, it says sea to sea. What is the other sea? The Gulf of Aqaba from the south. The Iranian army down there in Yemen. The Jordanians across the mountain of Jordan. The Syrians also across the mountains of Jordan in the northern part. Ramat Golan. All of our enemies are going to come. They will cross the river. You see the river there, the Jordan River. They'll cross the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. All right? What does the scripture say? There shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria. That's Syria, modern day Syria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein. That is the most profound prophetic scripture I have ever seen for the time we're living in now because of the fruit of their doings. Let's look at that. I'll read it to you from the King James Version, those that follow through the King James, that particular part. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. What land? The land of Assyria. Because of the fruit of their doings. You see, what happened, the United States was the first one to cause the Syrian crisis. See, they're coming from where? There shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt, and to the river, and the river from the sea to sea, and from the mountain to mountain. Who are they coming to? They're coming to Israel. But they're coming from where? Assyria. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doings. You see, Syria, the United States, they, they try to blame it on Russia. Russia, of course, Russia is adding to the problem as well, but the, the, the crisis was already there. 1.5 million refu Syrian refugees in Germany alone in 2015. Not counting all the other countries, not counting the illegal immigrants that they have in all the different countries that came up through Turkey and, and have migrated across it, have, that have just, they, they've totally made it to where these lands no longer have their people within them. This is the most amazing thing that I have seen. God is identifying for us to know when redemption to Israel is going to come. It will be when the Assyrian comes. See, they shall be a day when they shall come unto thee, Israel, from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, from Egypt, even to the river, and from the sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Israel will be swarmed upon from all these lands, and the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein. Them. Them are the ones that are coming. Their land is going to be desolate. Because why? Their people, they already had a problem there. God set the stage for us. Then look what he says. Tend thy people with thy staff, the flock of thy heritage that dwell solitarily as a forest in the midst of the fruit field. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. And in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt will I show unto him marvelous things. The nation shall see and be put to shame for all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. See, now that's how we do know that it's a battle coming up against Israel. He says, because for all their might, they shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. Now remember, I realize scripture can have compound prophecies within them. There could be yet another prophecy prophecy laying in here in between these lines as well but the thing is I'm showing you what the Lord has shown to me today they shall lick the dust like a serpent like crawling things of the earth they shall come trembling out of their close places they shall come with fear unto the Lord our God and shall be afraid because of thee now in King James verse 17 has a little bit differently worked word they shall lick the dust like a serpent they shall move out of their holes like worms again another prophecy that clearly shows what Hamas it shows the Palestinian tunnel networks it shows Hezbollah tunnel networks they will sh they will come out of these holes like worms when God comes and begins to do the judgment upon the, the heathen nations that have come against Israel. 
See, another prophecy clearly identifying the time we're living in. Since when did the enemies in the days of old ever have a tunnel network into Israel? Only in this day, they shall lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their close places or out of their holes, according to the King James version of this. And let me just real quick, I do believe, yes, we have Micah open here. Let me just pull that one up for you. And let me go back to the actual verse. We're in verse 17. Okay, verse 17. And we look at this real quickly here. The holes, all right? Um, it's an enclosing place. Concretely, a stronghold, border, closed place. It's a hole. Isn't it interesting? Concretely. Which, I know that doesn't necessarily mean concrete itself, but it's just kind of interesting that that word is there because they make the tunnels out of concrete. Exactly. So, just wanted to throw that in there for you so we can see that. Now, notice what he says here. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth the iniquity and pacify the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger. Forever, because he delighteth in mercy. Just like he said, he didn't need the blood of the bulls and goats and rams, as he says here in chapter 6. But he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will show faithfulness to Jacob, mercy to Abraham, as thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Amazing. The redemption of Israel comes at a time when Syria will actually be desolate of our own population, at a time when our enemies are coming out of holes of the earth around Israel like worms. Do you realize the prophetic implications of Micah's chapter 7? It is absolutely astounding. You are at the door of the redemption of Israel, a remnant of Israel that will actually believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. God will bring them to the light. They don't go to the light. He brings the light to them, or brings them to the light, I should say. It's amazing what God is doing. Let's just real quick look at that a little bit more. Um, uh, Yes, right here, verse 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. He will plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. He brings Israel there. Then my enemies shall see it and shame shall cover her who said to me, Where is the Lord thy God? My enemies shall gaze upon her. Now shall she be trodden down as a mire of the streets. Now, see, they say, Where is your God? They've already attacked Israel. They pushed Israel, no doubt, out of the Golan and out of Jerusalem. But God does not forsake his own people. Syria is desolate. Because of her own doing. Back again, verse 17, one more time. Look at that. They shall lick, wait a minute, I'm sorry, that's, uh, back it up a little bit. Uh, nope, let's go back. Let's look at, okay, verse 12. There shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt, even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land shall be desolate for them, their land is desolate, that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doings. You see, their own doings because of civil war and strife, the U.S., Russia, and, and Basar al-Assad, the Vatican, everybody that's got their little hand in there to try to take over these areas there for the all-rich regions that are in Syria as well as in Lebanon and Iraq and all these places. Their land is desolate because of their own doings. God sets you a time frame, gives you clearly in the book of Micah, the prophecy, two key elements, two friends, two, two key elements to look at. When Syria does the invasion, her land is desolate because of her own doings. And also, Israel's enemy comes out of the earth like worms out of a hole. The Palestinians and also Hamas from the Gaza Strip and all the tunnel networks, even Hezbollah building the tunnels, God has identified the hour of Israel's redemption. 
and the prophet Micah. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Catch us there on live stream. We normally have it at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it's about 9.30 p.m. Uh, East European Time and 10.30 p.m. in Israel uh, on their time as well. Shalom and good evening. Thank you.